make of all this protest going on? The protests are good, but Nigerians are still not focused. The reason I'm saying this is I'm about the truth. You know, Shea, I talk the truth. Nigerians don't like the truth. I'm not going to be here any longer for long, okay? My U.S. pension is moving close. And as it gets closer, I'm moving back to the U.S. My children are there. They're Americans. But I cannot leave and see these children suffer the same cycle of things. So my thing is, I'll tell you the truth. Nigerian youth are the problem. Why? They have no, they have no sense of history, past, you know, present. So they have no sense of the future, of what's coming up. When you try to tell something to Nigerian youth, look at as we're talking now. I was doing an interview with um, Sahara reporters, Fatima, on Sunday. Look as we're talking, Ashaye, if you can program your brain to what I'm telling you and the comments, you can tell by the comments, we don't need you here. You don't smoke. Oh, Mali. You see curses? This is the reason. <laughs> it's amazing because these young people, they're reporting my page. And you know what happened to them? When I did a live video yesterday, Instagram actually disabled their comments. I didn't disable it. Instagram did it from their end. So I see you just disabled it too, but I really don't mind if it's there because I like them to talk. They need to know what's going on. There's life beyond Instagram. There is no focus for these children because they don't know the past. These kids have never seen electricity 24 hours. They have never seen free education. They have not seen what we saw. Okay, Diane Searcy, one of the New York Times reporter that was talking about the protests, she was reporting it, West African reporter. I was telling her this. I said, they've not seen many things we see. Who are their parents? Okay, I listed the list of criminals in Nigeria as 18 to 25. And that's the same age gap that Diane had a New York Times reporter for West Africa. And I listed cultists, ritualists, bandits, terrorists, armed robbers, Yahoo boy. And I said, don't blame the government, blame your parents. And the whole internet went on fire. Did you see that? Yeah. The internet went on fire and they've been cursing me straight for three days. I don't care. Anyone that curses me knows the curse is coming right back to them and their family. You're going to die. Your mother's going to die. You're gonna, your children will be killed by SARS. Your siblings will be killed by SARS. I don't bother with these kids. The people that want to help you are here. When they leave, you're alone. Okay, I started a hashtag this year. It says fight for yourselves. Did you see what Charlie Boy said? Yeah. Charlie Boy said, after 40 years, you want me to go and protest? We tell you to do this, you don't do it. Why is it the same cycle? Shay, why is it the same cycle? My oldest son is going to be 34 in the U.S. He asked me, what is ASUU? I said, what is that? What did you just say? He said, ASUU. He was calling it like an acronym. I said, ASU? I said, that's a university. My son wanted to know why ASU strikes every year. Shay, does this make sense? Yeah. Is my son's question sensible? I said, yeah. I don't know why they strike every year. But it's, it's a cycle of nonsense. Shawere said that when the government sees young people as stupid, they like to keep them that way. And it's true. Why do we have an ASU strike every year? When I told young people this in 2019 election, don't make the mistake of recycling leaders. They were screaming, articulate, articulate. Why are you articulating? Why can't you vote for Shawere, a young leader, a new face? Why are you recycling leaders? Atiku started his own university. His boss, the president, started his own university. Obasu just started a university. Vice president started a university. Asu strike started so that the children of the poor wouldn't go to school, but the children of the rich will come to their universities. It's a scam. It's an elaborate scam. I told Obasu of this. But it's gone on over, on, since 1999, as a strike, as a strike, as a strike. Wake up! Nigerian youth have the power, but they're not using it. They're abusing a 56-year-old woman. Weary, mad woman, everything. Shea, if I come and say you're in the middle of this interview, it's out of passion. Okay? How are you serious? 
But so about finish in Nigeria, couldn't think of Otoma Kumo. I just did a BBC thing the other day, a BBC pigeon. How do I make this thing going on? This protest has been hijacked. I believe you've seen the latest sidelines. Sega no. Link said they've hijacked. Oh, it just came out 15 minutes ago. Sega Link said they've hijacked the process. We saw it and we knew it. And we know the people that hijacked it. And we discussed this last night. It's now in the punch as of 15 minutes ago. Someone worked so hard in 2017. I am a victim of SARS. And when you called me this morning, Shaye, what was I doing? Was I not crying? Yes, you were crying. Tears. I was in tears. I was a victim of SARS. And I'm not talking about Badori and uh, extorting my artist and all that. It was when my artist, okay, Wealth is now my former artist because I, I worked for him for six months. Wealth told me every time he goes to the studio, they always stop him because he has a nice car and he's dressed nice. And he says, I'm an artist. I sell cars at a car dealership during the day, but I'm also an artist. I'm trying to build my music. Okay, give us money for fuel. Give us this, give us that. He always opens his mobile app and gives them money. He got tired of it. He said he was being raped by the police. That's how he felt, a rape victim and couldn't talk, couldn't say out because of the stigma. So when he told me, I said, okay, the next time you're going to the studio, we're going with you. So we made that right. We went to the supermarket and then we went to the studio, not to do anything, but I went to see that producer and I wanted him to listen to some of my son's music. As soon as we finished a one hour listening session, we left the studio and yes, it happened. He was like driving, oh, 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 mommy, I'm in the back. My son is in the front with him. Mommy, see, see, they've done it again. They pulled over. Now when they pulled off and I said, okay, uh, can, can we help you? Um, please step out of the car. For what? I'm looking at the window. For what? What have we done? Do you have a warrant? And then my son said, um, I'm an American. I'm just visiting my mother in Nigeria. Let me call the U.S. Embassy because it says when I'm in distress, I must call, I must call the embassy because I don't know why you're stopping us. I mean, they met their match. And then I, you could hear me in the video screaming to the children. Okay, everybody out, out, out. Let them search. We're watching what they're doing. When they finish searching, next thing, one of them was coming towards me. Madam, let me see your bag. I'm searching for drugs. <laughs> you must be stupid. Officer Kelly, she wanted to see my bag. I said, you're not even going to snatch it because I will give you hell today. You know, the person we're talking about is my friend now. He's a very good officer. But the way they were trained, they need to be retrained. You know what I mean? And I personally retrained him over phone calls and everything. I started talking to him. Officer Kelechi was an officer, was a civilian before he became an officer. Okay, how much is he getting paid? What the fight was about is, Kelechi said, my boys don't extort. And he's right. The set of SARS guys that were there on that day, the right. four men that was with him, are different. The four men there with him that day are different for the, from the other four that were there yesterday or the day before. Maybe those other teams were extorting, but he said, no, not my boys. He was their leader. At the end of the whole thing, which I didn't post on social media because I didn't record it. They were circling the car. All of them lined up outside the car and they were all apologizing to me. Throughout the whole thing, they didn't know who I was until the Mopo in the bank came and told them. So this is a good officer. And I learned from him. He learned from me. Officer Kelly, she's a really good officer, Badori. When you now talk to me about what is going on, I can't do that job. That's the only job I can do in my life, to be a police officer. So that's why I support them. My grandfather was a former police officer and one of the iconic Nigerian police officers, first deputy IGP. So nobody in the world can tell me not to, not to like police. Uh, I support police, but I don't support bad officers. Shaya, today I'm going to post something on my page, a fight I had. <laughs> a fight I had with Toronto police, uh, me and two officers. And of course, when I left Canada, when the Toronto police spokesman talked about me on my, on my deportation, there was one particular paper, the Toronto Star, that he said, some of my colleagues, he said, some, some people in the community didn't want us associating with her, but associating with her helped us solve a lot of crimes. Like Kemi got a lot of guns off the streets. But there was one particular paper that wrote, even some of my colleagues didn't want me to associate. Who are those colleagues? 
You know, I want Tim Brown and Kobe, white cops that didn't like the fact that a black woman was fighting gun violence. If it was a white woman, they wouldn't say anything. So there's not always everybody that's good in the department. But don't let one police officer, A to point B, I'm asthmatic. I cannot even walk. Number two, it's really my main problem is I can't work. I can't walk. Okay, because I'm asthmatic, I start to wheeze. And there is a very important and famous story of how they took me from University of Ibadan at 10 years old and moved me to Molite to live with my grandmother. Shaya, you know our house in Molite. You know it's near, I it's do. near, Saint, you know it's near Saint Teresa's, right? Yes. Okay, that, that's the reason why at 10 years old to 12, I lived with Alaja because I would just go from Alaja's house straight to the school. Believe it or not, I used to come from UI. The UI boss would drop you as secretariat. You catch Dube Dube from Secretariat. When you get to Dube, another. I was taking three buses. You know how it is when you arrive at the gates of St. Teresa. You're going to walk up. You know that yeah. whole walk up. Yes. Uh -huh. By the time I get up there, I'm having asthma. So Sister Agnes will call Daddy at the Ministry of Education, who was the commissioner. Kemi has asthma. Come pick him up. A journey that started at 7 o'clock ends at 10 a.m. I'm going home because I have asthma. So I can't protest. And when there's tear gas, which is possible, then I'm the one in trouble. Asthmatics and tear gas don't mix. So I started community rallies in Canada. We'll be on one spot and we'll have the thing. I'll be talking to the people. That's what I want to do, my own rallies. So that's why I don't protest. But the focus should have been on a revolutionary rally. When Shore and his people are revolution now came, I heard that they chased them away. They said, no, 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 this is not revolution. This is answers. See where we don't focus? You take opportunity. I let Buhari see that nothing is working. This is just the beginning. So that really surprised me. We're not focused. We're fighting between ourselves in protest. It should be one damn protest. But like I said, I'm having rallies. I've notified the police in Aja, Songote, Doleki. I've notified the cops. They know me. I want to have a rally in this spot. It's going to Wait. be a big no, I'm planning it now, but I, the way I told them, I want to have it in a big spot. We're going to find an area, maybe a field, okay? We're going to have people who's going to give me a convertible, I keep saying convertible, a sunroof car that I can stand and come out of the top and talk to people. And then I'm going to have police who is going to be there for security, okay? Nobody wants to be harmed. I don't want to be harmed. You don't want to be harmed. And I've told people, if you're coming to my rally and you do wrong, the police vans are there. I, I'm telling these officers, Mopoles and, and police detention van, any nonsense you're taking away. I'm not playing around. I'm trying to address young people and address Nigerians. And I'm really trying to take it nationally. To take it nationally is money, okay? You need to get sponsors. Who's going to pay for your hotel? Who's going to pay for your crew? All that. For now, I want to do it where I am, my community first. Everybody to their communities, okay? I'm an Ohio State citizen, but I live in Lagos, in the island. So right now, this is my immediate community, okay? And when I say community, there are two communities, you know, that I really relate to, Badore, Aja, and also the Sangote, Doleki places. So all those areas, I have business there, live there, and all. So I feel that everybody is now an activist. Everybody should activate in their community. And it's going well with the protests, but why isolated Shawares group? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. They're isolated Shawares group because they're scared of the government. You can't fight the government and be scared at the same time. Okay, and because Shawares has a case with the government, and that case is still pending. Look, Shaye, Naramali has a case with the EFCC. The case is still pending. Do you understand me? Yeah. And the EFCC is literally the police. He sat with Frank Kumba and they did a video. They spoke. Okay, but these guys still have cases. But that doesn't mean they can't speak out. So I, I think it's, you know, you know, anarchy is what I don't like. I don't like, this, I don't like the, 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 the way they hij hijack the whole thing. What is N-SWAT? They want to form a SWAT team, a special tactical, you know, the American SWAT. And now that's trending. Have you seen it? Number one, N-SWAT. Yes. If you're saying end SWAT, that means you're trying to end the police. You want anarchy. You don't want any law enforcement. You're criminals. Straight up, you're criminals. Okay? Calling Kaepernick an NBA basketball, an NBA, what is he? A football player. That one that always bends his knees, that can't stand up to the national anthem. Did you see what he wrote? His essay? His latest essay on CBS News in America, abolish the police and prisons. What kind of nonsense is that? 
prisons, I replied to him, prisons were designed for something. You know, prisons were designed and police were designed to take individuals who mess up the community away from that community and lock them up in one place and let them learn before they go back into that community. Okay? Down the road in Badori, there is a lot of cult boys, they call them. America calls them gang members in Canada. All these cult boys dress well. They're out there doing their thing. But when there's a cult war, seven people were shot down the street last year, this time last year, seven. One of them was someone that lives in this area going to work. Officer Kelechi, the SARS officer that stopped me, that everybody's trying to use clout for. Oh, but SARS stopped you. You're not saying anything. And so what? That's a SARS officer. And I confronted him face to face. Okay, the SARS that really violated my fundamental human rights are the SARS officers, the federal SARS that came to Ibadu to arrest a journalist in the home of an elderly former governor. A journalist, the daughter of a former governor for that matter. Those SARS. And kidnapped me without my family's knowledge. Telling my mother to meet us at headquarters and then they took me 12 hours to Port Harcourt. Police officers, 14 surrounded my house, AK-47. I don't know whether they're going to kill me. I don't know what they're going to do with me. But I was very terrified. I developed illnesses, post-traumatic stress, PTSD. I almost died. I had suicidal tendencies. I had, I had views of police as bad people. They suffered me, Shaye. They suffered me. And I'm trying to hold back my tears because I've cried this morning while you were on the phone with me. Yeah. And this is the reason why I'm angry, but I don't have to let people use me for clout. I don't need it. The people are saying, Auntie you should I come and shave you? They stop your ass. Shave you. No, don't use me for that. When I was doing that, you were laughing. All of you were laughing. Auntie Kemi is spinning 360 degrees. This was a serious issue. It wasn't about spinning or anything. It wasn't about that. Don't use me for your gain and your clout. 